All right, this is, you know, uh, about wisdom. I think it's one of the things that's not stressed enough about using wisdom. Uh, a lot of times, you know, wisdom is some wisdom is something you use 24-7. You know, not just when a brother goes off and then want to, you know, give, give him wisdom lectures. But wisdom is, is a principal thing. And scripture says in Isaiah, I'll grab it. Isaiah 33 and 6, you know, we got to, to really use wisdom. The other side said, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Wisdom. This is Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. It says, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of that time. You know, you know what's going on because why? You've did Isaiah, not Isaiah, Sirach 39 and 1, which says, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Oh, so... That's wisdom right there. I'll keep reading. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. And where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. So, he's a man that searches for wisdom. That's what that is. He's a man that searches for wisdom, looking for ways to apply it. You don't always have to learn, you know, from, you know, the moment you make a mistake. Sometimes you can learn by other people's mistakes and sometimes learn and sometimes by meditating. I'm going to grab this in Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 32. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instructions. And be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of Yahweh. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So this is talking about wisdom. Now let me slow it down. That I just read through it. This is uh, Proverbs 7, uh, 8 and 32. I hope I didn't say 7 and 32 the first time. Proverbs 8 and 32. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. So, children is talking about us. Because this book was written and addressed to who? The Israelites. So, it says, For blessed are they that keep my ways. Of what? Wisdom. Who's using wisdom. And if you are in the law, such as commandments, occupied in prophecies, conversing in dark parables, guess what? You're going to be one of those ones that are keeping his ways. Verse 33, hear instructions and be wise and refuse it not. Listen. Don't be hard-headed, being stubborn. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates. Waiting at the posts of my doors. You know. You're anxious. You're anxious to learn. You're, you're waiting. For whoso findeth me findeth life. And shall obtain favor of Yahweh. And you will find a, a beautiful example of Solomon. He received a favor. From the heavenly father. Of how to judge Israel. That's one of the that's best that's one of the chief things is to know how to judge. And that's what you need wisdom for is to know how to judge. You know, because this you follow the laws to a T that doesn't make you, you know, necessarily the uh 
Let's, let, me, let me rephrase that. You follow the letter of the law to a T. That doesn't necessarily make you a judge. A good judge. You could follow the law to the letter and still not have the spirit of discernment. And it's something that you see with a lot of brothers who are unfortunately are in, in this truth or in this faith. I see it from all walks. I see I see it from, you know, the T shirt fringes, Israelites that, you know, make rap videos and stuff like that, to, you know, more seasoned people who are out there is judgment. They don't really understand uh judgment. And not to say that I'm perfect in it, but just speaking on a from the perspective of somebody who knows more than the ones who I'm speaking about. One thing that one of the things you have with uh, Jake who has poor discernment and they judge other brothers because I mean we can judge. We know that. We can not judge. We're supposed to judge. There's a book called Judges, right? So there's nothing wrong with judging people. Nothing wrong with judging the brother. The problem is, and here's where w lack of wisdom comes. When you judge brothers and you always jump to negative conclusions, negative assumptions. And that's the only thing you know how to do. Every time you try to discern a situation... You notice either yourself or somebody else, every time that they try to guess or try to discern, it's always something negative. Always, 100% of the time. That is that is a person that does not have good discernment. Because everything that you judge is not always going to be bad. So how are you always coming to negative and bad conclusions? Look at Yahushai. When he spoke to the seven churches, he told them what they did bad. That's judgment. But he also told them what they did that was good. That's judgment. And what happens often too much is that you have brothers that that just judge the negative. They just they just see the bad. That they they're good at seeing the bad in somebody. They haven't noticed that. Okay, man. This brother has stepped it up lately. They haven't noticed that the brother is all of a sudden coming to camp on time. Or they haven't noticed that a brother is giving alms more often. Or they haven't noticed some other stuff. But they're quick, you know, and on the, the, the uh, like a marksman to notice anything bad about that person or to assume something bad about that person. Oh, a brother doesn't want to eat. Oh, oh, so, something wrong with him. Oh, oh, he, he, he depressed. You, you didn't, you didn't jump to a conclusion, and it was negative. What if the brother doesn't want to eat because he's on a fast? He being spiritual. Did you consider that? Because that's something positive, but you jump to the negative. Oh, uh, a brother doesn't want to uh, come back in fellowship. Oh, he must not like brothers. Again, something negative. Did you consider that maybe he got something to do? I mean, it would be out of order to simply just, you know, not, <laughs> not you know, give a reason for not coming. But I'm just saying, there's so many conclusions that a person can come, arrive to. And why is it that you have a lot of brothers who always arrive to negative assumptions? That'll make... A person not want to be around you. You know, scripture talks about an evil suspicion. You know, just. Uh, Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24 and 9. The thought of foolishness is sin and the scorn is an abomination of men. The mere thought of foolishness is sin. There's some brothers who only know how to draw negative conclusions. 
and you and and you can see them be wrong and wrong, and you can see that the spirit is showing them that they're wrong again, time and time and again. But they don't take that as a lesson to be like, hey, maybe my discernment ain't discerning like that. Maybe I need to go back to the drawing board and work on my discernment. Because if you true got good discernment, you're able to see both good and bad. It's like some people only can see the bad. You know, so that's been my lesson. And I want to give all praises and glory to you. How about Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Kakudash, Double Honest, Elders of GMS, Ruel, Peace, Salutations, and Shalom.